Hello everybody, Father Stephen Abrado, ProtestChildKilling.com, ProtestChildKilling.com, the featured link is right there. Please go to ProtestChildKilling.com, subscribe to my Rumble and YouTube channel, I appreciate it. I guess, especially YouTube, I don't trust YouTube, but, uh, uh, you know, right now the numbers are going up in YouTube and Rumble not so much. Uh, my following is modest in both, to say the least. I am not a major player. I am not a social media influencer, right? I'm actually here for you guys. I'm here for you guys. I'm here because I enjoy this, and it does give me a sense of being a pastor. Uh gives me a sense of being able to give you some scriptural reflections and spiritual direction, some social and church commentary. Today is going to be no different. Uh, so again, protestchildkilling.com, protestchildkilling.com. You can access all my campaigns, my ministries, my goings-ons, uh, the Men's March, Rally for Personhood, Ireland Repent, uh, all my social media platforms, all the URLs that we talk about, realestateforlife.org, ourladyofamerica.com. Uh, everything is there. Uh, let's see if we have a saint of the day today. I don't think we do. Boy, January's almost over. I'm almost out of here. Well, St. Gildas, St. Gildas tells us we must be aware of preferring fasted, fasting to charity. We must be aware of preferring of preferring fasting to charity, our own ideas to peacefulness, Privacy to praying with others in church. In short, we must be aware of preferring human beings to God. All right, so what is St. Gildas saying? I mean, this is really some great spiritual direction. In short, we must be aware of preferring human beings to God. Very interesting. So we must be aware of preferring fasting to charity. So she's saying charity is more important than fasting. Is that true? That's absolutely true. That's absolutely true. As a matter of fact, fasting should lead you to charity, but charity is the more noble act, more noble than fasting. All right, Our own ideas to peacefulness, peaceable peaceableness, peaceableness, I don't even know if that's a word, peaceableness, all right, our own ideas to peacefulness, privacy to praying with others in church. So praying in communion is more important than praying in private. So some words of wisdom from St. Gildas. Uh, St. Gildas is a 6th century saint, died in 570. St. Gildas intercede for us. All right, so I was going to name, I was going to title today's video, You're So Vain, You Probably Think This Video Is About You. You're so vain, you probably think this video is about you. Now that goes back to me posting Defense of the Pope. You guys know that I've been defending the Pope, not that I am, not that I think the Pope is impeccable, because I don't, all right? Matter of fact, I just posted today that I will never take the remedy, what I consider the immoral remedy for the worldwide problem, right? The worldwide problem that we had a few years ago, four years ago. It's hard to believe it was four years ago, right? It's coming up on four years. But there's no way I'm going to take the worldwide remedy. It's immoral. No way. Okay? So I'm in disagreement there. Uh, uh, but, all right, I am not going to stand by and allow people to lie and slander the Pope. And I talked about this yesterday. All right? Um, and so I was going to talk today about the fact that, and I've mentioned this before, That when you're dealing with these people who think it's okay to say anything about the Pope, they can criticize the Pope. They they 
disagreeing. They, they say disagreeing with the Pope. But then you listen to their words and you see comment after comment after comment. You, uh, you come to the realization that they see nothing good in the Pope. Right. They they can't find any good. They never say anything good about the Pope. Right. So, you know, that there's something more going on than just this disagreement. Right. And then this is where I take issue. Right. Um, that if you criticize these people, if you criticize them, they take offense. Right. They take offense and they take great offense. Many of them take great offense. And this is interesting, right? And as a matter of fact, if I just post something general, something like, for instance, uh, I reference Pope bashers or Pope haters, these people come out of the woodwork and say, well, I don't hate the Pope. I don't, well, I never said you hate the Pope. As a preacher, if I preach on a particular topic, I'm preaching to everyone but does that mean that everyone is guilty of the particular sin or human failing? Or am I preaching to every single person as if they are dealing with this particular issue? No, the shoe fits where it, right? Right. So so people, you can tell, you know, that when you when you use certain terminology, Pope bashing, Pope hating, and people come out of the woodwork. Well, I don't hate the Pope. And then actually, as uh, 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 the thread evolves, you find out, well, you surely don't like him, right? You surely don't like him. And it goes beyond disagreement, right? Um, you, you can tell, right, that the people have disdain and maybe even hate the Pope. And I've defined what I mean by Pope haters over and over and over again, right? Uh, but again, people don't want to get it. It's just like the Pope explaining fiducia supplicans over and over and over again, but people don't want to get it because it doesn't fit their narrative. Well, just like I explain over and over and over again how I define Pope haters, uh, people don't want to hear it because it doesn't fit their narrative. I think it actually really convicts them, right? Uh, they want to be able to disagree with the Pope and criticize the Pope without being criticized themselves, without being labeled themselves. And I find that very, very interesting, right? And so that's why I was going to title it, You're So Vain, You Probably Think This Video Is About You. But then I came to the realization that I can be just as critical and mean and uncharitable as them that I can judge their hearts just as badly as they judge the popes. And so as an example to them, and really as a witness to true Catholicism, I think it's important for me to look at myself and say, you know what, I can do a better job in dealing with these people who I feel are critical of the pope, maybe even lie about the pope, slander the pope, and I need to be gentler with them. I need to be more charitable with them. Yes, I can disagree. Yes, uh, I can be critical, but in such a way that it doesn't turn them off. And, and I get complaints about this. Now, not to interrupt, but right there in the comments are my Rumble and YouTube channels. So the links to my Rumble and YouTube channels, I have almost 70 people on right now. So if you're listening, just please click on in the uh, comments, my Rumble and YouTube channel, and please like and even hit the notification button so you will know when I am uh, uh, going to premiere a video. And I, and I post mass every day. So my mass every day, most days or subsequently, I'll post a homily from the Mass, just the homily, and then Father Imbarato Live. So I was going to title this, You're So Vain, You Probably Think This uh, Video Is About You, but then I'm calling people vain, right? I'm calling people vain. It's really tongue-in-cheek. 
But that's when I, I was thinking about the fact that I can do a better job being more charitable. I am not going to stop defending the Pope. I'm not going to stop pointing out to people that they owe the Pope a modicum of charity, that they owe the Pope the benefit of the doubt. I'm not going to stop pointing out that the Pope is not evil, the Pope is not satanic, the Pope is not a heretic. I am not going to stop pointing out that the Pope is not a usurper, the Pope is not diabolical, the Pope is not deceptive. If somebody says the Pope is confusing, I'm not going to stop pointing out that maybe just because you're confused doesn't mean the Pope is confusing. You can be confused because you allow yourself to be confused because of a closed heart, or you allow yourself to be confused because you're listening to, to Pope bashers and Pope haters. Okay? Who am I talking about? I'm talking about Taylor Marshall. I'm talking about Anthony Stein. I'm talking about Michael Matt. I'm talking about John Henry Weston. I'm talking about these people who can find no good in the Pope. Carlo Maria Vigano, right, who clearly hates the Pope, who is now in schism. I talked about that at length yesterday. I'm not going to stop pointing out to people that they're in danger of going or falling into even formal schism as Archbishop Vigano has. But at least... You need to consider that you might be in material schism by supporting and promoting people like Taylor Marshall, Raymond Arroyo and the Papal Posse, John Henry Weston, and others. And I've talked about this at length, and I'm not going to stop talking about it. All right, for those of you who may not have been here yesterday and may want to hear, how do I define a Pope hater? A Pope hater is someone who cannot find any good in the Pope at all, can never bring themselves to say anything good about the Pope, that every single day or every time you hear from them, they are criticizing the Pope, they're negative about the Pope, they're critical of the Pope every single day, all right? That's how I define Pope haters. I define Pope haters as those who call the Pope names. Oh, he's Satan. He's evil. He's diabolical. He's satanic. He's a heretic. He's a usurper. He's divisive. All right? These people hate the Pope. You can't call the Pope evil or satanic and diabolical and say you don't hate the Pope. And I've said this over and over again. Why? Because we as Catholics are supposed to hate evil, hate that which is diabolical, and hate Satan. No, Father, we, we hate the Satanic, not Satan. No, you have to hate Satan. Right? I mean, that might be hard for you to get your mind around, but Satan is the, is, is the epitome of evil, the manifestation of evil. So you have to hate evil. So if you're calling the Pope satanic, you have to hate the Pope. So if you're calling the Pope names, if you can't, if you can't find any good in the Pope or say anything good about the Pope, all right, then... I'm sorry, you hate the Pope. If you're lying about the Pope, slan well, slandering the Pope is calling him names, right? If you're lying about the Pope, in other words, if you're still saying that the Pope wants to bless homosexual unions, you're lying about the Pope. And you'll see that these Catholic influencers are doing exactly that. So I'm not going to stop defending the Pope. Not in all things. Again, I have issues with the Pope. I think the whole Pachimama episode was contrived. 
was again a manipulation by those who hate the Pope. Nuestra Señora de Amazonia, it's not Pachimama. All right? I think the whole dubia thing in the summertime was unexcusable for the cardinals to do what they did in trying to undermine the synod. All those who were saying the synod was going to uh, call for the ordination of priests, were going to call for the blessing of homosexual unions, that never came about. And then instead of admitting that they were wrong, they said, oh, well, they're just laying the groundwork. They're setting us up. They're sandbagging us. See, this is hate. This is hate. Now, the other thing you need to be aware of, and this is how you judge whether you're in schism or not, is do you find that the Pope is illegitimate? Do you think the Pope is a usurper? Do you think the Pope is not a legitimate Pope? Do you think the chair is empty? Whether because you think the Pope is a heretic and thus he ceases to be the Pope in your mind or whether he's illegitimately elected, that the vote was a fraud, then you got a problem. Those people then, it's only a short leap to saying, oh, the ordinary form of the mass is corrupt. I had a guy tell me that today. He said that all the sacraments, basically all the Pope Paul VI sacraments are corrupt, are corrupt. That's what he said. So he's saying that the, the missal and the rites upon which all of the sacraments of Pope Paul VI are corrupt. And so I posted a video of yesterday's Mass, beautiful Mass here, and asked them, what, what part of this Mass is corrupt? You're saying that the Mass I celebrate every day is corrupt, which means that my priesthood is corrupt. In other words, he doesn't see uh, the ordinary form of the Mass as being valid. So the Pope's not legitimate. The ordinary form of the Mass is not valid. Second Vatican Council's not valid. So you're set of a contest and you deny the validity of Second Vatican Council and uh, the ordinary form of the Mass. If you do, I'm not saying all of you do. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that everybody who disagrees with the Pope thinks that the Pope is illegitimate. I'm showing you the slippery slope. I'm showing the road that many people go down. Vigano, Altman. It's a dangerous road. Some are a little more sly, right? John Henry Weston and, and, and Taylor Marshall. That makes them, in my mind, even more dangerous. So I'm not going to stop speaking the truth. I'm going to warn you how you can identify material schism. If you start thinking the Second Vatican Council is Ill, Ill, invalid, not legitimate, schismatic, right? Vigano calls the Second Vatican Council schismatic. He calls the ordinary form of the Mass schismatic. He says the Pope is schismatic. So Vigano is now the head of the church. That's what Vigano is claiming. He's the head of the church. He's re-consecrated himself, and he's now within the church, and I guess the head of the church, because the Pope and everybody who supports the Pope is schismatic. Think about that. Think about that. So I am not going to keep going down that road. I, I mean, I'm going to keep going down that road. I keep warning people about Altman Road and Vigano Cliff. What I need to do is soften, soften my judgment about individual people. Individual people. People who say certain things. I need to point out the truth to them without judging them, judging their heart. So, for instance, this woman who said that seems the Pope is very deceptive. Now, that's a, that's a serious, serious charge. Now, she does say seems. 
So that's a reflection of where she, how she's filtering. Very deceptive. The Pope is very deceptive. So you're saying that the Pope is purposely misleading people, purposely lying. So what you see is not what you get with the Pope. Now, I said, well, you're a Pope hater. And I think that was too far. I should have said, well, you seem as if you're a Pope hater, right? Use the same terminology that she did. But I can avoid doing this. And I can avoid doing this by saying, can I ask you a question? Do you think you hate the Pope? Right? So there's better ways of handling it, and I admit it. All right? I admit it. And I'm doing this, all right, because I want my conscience to be clear. I want to constantly look at my heart and make sure my heart is in the right place. But also as an example for those who have hardened hearts towards the Pope. Hardened hearts towards the church, whether it be the last 50 years of the church. And that's why I bring up Vigano all the time. That's what yesterday's video was all about. We now have a choice between Vigano, who is a high-profile prelate, Vatican prelate for decades, high profile in the church. And when he started criticizing the Pope, everybody, everybody was covering him. His, 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 his letters were everywhere. Everybody was sharing their letters. Now, not so much. Why? Because they know that I'm right. They know there's something wrong with him. Now they won't admit it. And that's a real problem. So that's the example I'm trying to set. I'm admitting that I've been wrong in terms of judging certain people's hearts. And that comes from looking at ourselves. I, I admit that I was wrong in terms of judging the Pope. Of I was wrong going down going down Altman Road. And never, I don't think, ever called the Pope any names. I don't think I ever got that far down Vigano Road. But I was critical of the Pope. And I was getting my mind and heart closed towards the Pope. I was beginning to think that this guy is just one big problem after another. Never giving him the benefit of the doubt. But then my eyes were open. Thank you, Jesus. And I realized I was wrong and I repented. Now I'm defending the Pope. Not in all things, not in everything. The Pope is not impeccable. But when he's being lied about, when he's being slandered, when he's being treated unfairly, when he's being misconstrued, when he's not being given a modicum of charity, I'm going to defend him. So please, I'm, I'm asking you all to step back look objectively at this entire situation and our hearts. Step back and look inside of our hearts. Where is our heart? I'm trying to do that every day. I preach about it often. You can check out my homilies here at Our Lady of Solitude Monastery. All right, the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass that we post every single morning. I have one more Mass here. That's tomorrow. And then I'm moseying on down the road. Heading back to Florida. I'll be spending a couple of nights in Albuquerque, one night in Texas, then heading back to Florida. All right, so that's where I want to leave you guys. I love you guys very much. Please pray for me. I'll pray for you. I'm not, we're going to pray. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. I'm not going anywhere, okay? I'm not going anywhere. We need to pray, all right? So I, I, I made my apologies. All right, but at the same time, I'm telling you where I'm going to stand. And I'm asking everyone to take a look within our own hearts. And again, the definitions are important. How I view somebody. All right, the lines that I think that people cross where I can call them Pope bashers or Pope haters or schismatics, material or formal schismatics. But how I approach that and how I tell them is what I really want to soften, how I want to change, how I want to do better.
all right, in the hopes of bringing them to where they need to be. Because I was once there, and now our Lord in his mercy brought me to where I am now. I'm Father Stephen Abrado at ProtestChildKilling.com, ProtestChildKilling.com. Let's pray for the Pope, bishops, and priests right now, and then we'll invoke St. Michael the Archangel, and we'll consecrate ourselves to the Blessed Virgin Mary, and then do some other prayers. Name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. Father in heaven, we thank you for your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who through his death and resurrection has given us the hope of eternal happiness with you, Father. Send your Holy Spirit upon the Pope, all bishops, and all priests, that they may be for us bold witnesses of faithful love for the Church. Remain for us examples of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. St. Gildas, St. Joseph, St. Stephen, intercede for the Pope, all bishops, and all priests, especially in our hour of need, Our Lady of Guadalupe, intercede for the conversion of the world, and the end to abortion. Amen. All right, now. Let's invoke St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle, be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Let's consecrate ourselves to the Blessed Virgin Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee we send up our sighs. Morning and weep in this valley of tears. Turn that most gracious advocate, his eyes of mercy towards us, and after this our exile. Show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus, O clement, O loving. O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promise of Christ. Let us pray. Remember, O most blessed Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thy intercession, was left unaided. Inspired with this confidence, we fly unto thee. Virgin of virgins, our mother, to you we come, but in thy clemency, hear and answer us. Amen. Now, I was just looking at the title here. I'm as guilty as they are. I'm as guilty as they are. Okay. You guys might be saying, well, Father, no, you're not. No, you're not. What they're doing is far worse. They're bashing the Pope. They're hating the Pope. They're moving down the road towards schism. Look it. We cannot start subjectively evaluating our sinfulness. All right? Yes, there's a difference between mortal sin and venial sin. And I'm not making a claim that any of them are in mortal sin. Is hating a mortal sin? I, I guess there's, there's, there's surely cases to be made and uh, uh, that, that it could be mortal sin, but are all, is all hate? I mean, invincible ignorance? Mortal sin, ignorance and arrogance. So there's a difference between mortal and venial sin, but I don't want to go there. I don't want to say, oh, my sin's not as bad as their sin. If we're sinning, if we're lacking charity, if we are lacking compassion, lacking mercy, if we're judging people's hearts, if we're being uncharitable, this whole idea that Vigano is not at fault because the Pope made him do it. I did a video about that last week. Is so bogus. People who think that they can be uncharitable because the Pope is this, this, and this. Right? I don't want to fall into that trap. You are responsible for your sin. I'm responsible for my sin. When we see Jesus face to face, People go and see Jesus face to face and they say, well, the reason why I was this way is because the Pope was this way. Eh. Or I say to Jesus, the way I was is because of the way the people were. Eh. We will be held accountable. When we see Jesus, we'll stand naked in front of Jesus, held accountable for our sins. And if we point fingers at other people, we make excuses, we're going to be in a lot of trouble. We're going to be in a lot of trouble. All right, that's like coming to the wedding feast without your clothes being clean 
or change of clothes, your wedding clothes, right? All right. All right, for those who uh, suffer physical and spiritual trials and tribulations, heart disease, strokes, diabetes, cancer, right, clinical depression, uh, suicidal ideation, right, all physical and spiritual trials and tribulations, we pray, Hail Mary, full of grace. The Lord is with thee, blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus, Holy Mary, Mother of God. Pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. All right, our daily offering. Our daily offering. We offer up our entire day, Lord, to you, our joys, our sorrows, our trials, our tribulations, our suffering, all of our spiritual exercises, everything, our work time, prayer time, family time, recreational time, for all of our intentions, our personal intentions, family intentions, ministerial intentions, health intentions, all the intentions of those who we said we would pray for, including those who may forget to pray for, for the intentions of those who pray for us, encourage us, support us each day. Right, the church, the Pope, bishops, priests, souls in purgatory, conversion of the world, our own daily personal conversions. This is how we pray ceaselessly and turn our day into a prayer. We should be doing this every single day. Daily offering in the morning, act of contrition, examination of conscience every single night. That's the bookends of the day. Please go to protestchildkilling.com, protestchildkilling.com. Subscribe to my Rumble and YouTube channel. Please check out all the URLs that are there, realestateforlife.org, rallyforpersonhood.com. Uh, uh, maybe tomorrow we'll do some rally for personhood stuff, all right? Irelandrepent.com. Let's pray for the repent, the, the conversion of Ireland, the conversion of our all of our nations, right? Um, all right, so all the URLs, all the websites, all the links that we talk about each and every single day are there. The prayers, the prayer cards are there. You can scroll down and take uh, photo shots, the screenshots of all the prayers, or you can send me a self-addressed stamped envelope. Yes, my Florida address is even there too. I love you. Pray for me. I'll pray for you. Share this video. One share per group. One share per page. Invite your family and friends to join us each day. Check out my mass, my homily. For all my friends and family on Facebook, very blessed. Need to get together very soon. All right. Okay. Very good. Pray for your intentions, Alice. Uh, check out my mass, my homily, Eucharistic adoration this morning here at the Poor Clare Monastery. Again, I love you. Pray for me. I'll pray for you. May Almighty God bless you all. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Go out into the world today, my friends, and give them heaven.